Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to the WBM Podcast. This is one of your hosts. It's your boy, Merc. Yo, you already know who this is. This is your boy, Chapo. And this is your boy, Tico and the man. Hey, man, man, man. Hey. Tell him, Merc. Guys, do we have one hell of an episode lined up for you this week. What we got? We talking Berserk Griffin! And there's so many more stories that you don't know that we're going to break down for you in it. We're also going to be talking about Green Flags. Chala. Yeah, she likes DBZ. That's a green flag. That's all green flags, baby. Yeah, I know right Chi Chi's definitely a green flag. Shit. Well, you know Andrew what? 18? Green Shit. flag. And you know you can't forget Boma. Tracks. And we gotta also discuss who's the strongest human in the DC DBZ universe. I know it's not Yamcha. <laughs> oh, we already know that's a fact. She's not even in the in the conversation, bro. But maybe Master Roshi. We'll find out. Let's go! Guys, first and foremost, we need to say make sure you guys are turning into our previous episode, our interview with the legendary John Swayze. That's guys. right, guys. Don't forget to tune out last week's episode. Yeah. Super special. One-on-one with the WBM team. Yes, yes, yes. Title of the episode, Witty Banter Media with John Swayze. We had a, a one-on-one, a face-to-face, virtually, with John <laughs> Swayze, the voice actor and director himself. The legend himself. He talked to us about some of his favorite projects and just so much more, man. Make sure you tune in to last week's episode. Go check it out, guys. It's a great one. Again, it's, it's, find it everywhere. It's one for the books. One for the books. I mean, many animes, man. I hope one day they actually put him, because of his voice, put him into one of the characters of one of my favorite mangas I've ever read. Because of his deep tone, especially has there is a character called Skull Knight that I think he'll be perfect for it. Okay, but Skull Knight is from what uh, manga? Berserk. 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 Okay, I've heard about Berserk. It's supposed to be really big, and I've seen the illustration. It's supposed to be one of the goaded ones, but honestly, I know nothing about it. Give me the, um, you want to give me a 60-second pitch? Man, I can give you the best pitch I got. Pretty okay, much is a, go. a guy with uh, with a mechanical arm ready to shove into the next demon's throat and just wait, pull the trigger. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy? There's you know what's a crazy? mechanical arm? That's the first page, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we start Berserker. That's what happened, bro. It's literally guts, like, gutting out, you know? <laughs> a demon, bro. And, like, in the first panel, you're like, okay, page two, right? And then <laughs> the demon, well, the, it's a woman, right? It turns into a demon, right? A succubi. Uh, huh? uh, uh, yes. <laughs> but, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, you know, he turns into a demon. Literally, this is really like the first, like, half of the page. And he's like, ah, oh, ah. Oh, I got you, girl. And his arm like turns into a like a like a cannon, bro. Puts it in her face, and then you know, Skadoosh. first finishes like a gentleman, and then pulls the trigger, bro. <laughs> okay, bro. bro, I had no idea Berserk had a mechanical arm. Yeah. What, what, is Berserk set That's like, in, like one, in medieval son. in medieval times? Is it set in the future? It is medieval times. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the is, pause. <laughs> the yes. truth is, it's not so much of the world because it doesn't play, the world itself doesn't play a major, doesn't major, doesn't play a major character until like where we are right now, per past the manga's cause death. For the most part of the story, we're focused on one character, Guts, right? His, the main like, character? The main yes. character. What's his name? Guts. Guts. G-O-T-S, Guts, right? It's pretty much all in his perspective, pretty much a horrible life. Uh, anything that you imagine like it's happened to him, happened, you know. You know, child exploitation, him, right? Because well, how was he born? Man, hardcore as fuck, bro. Born from a corpse of a hanging body, and the fetus just falls out, bro. He is the fetus that falls out. That's why these anime is like hard R. Well, the thing is that throughout the team of manga, right, is it faith that rules the hand of life? Or is life just a coincidence? So Guts proves that out through the whole manga, right? His existence shows that... I'm coming in from this horrible place where I don't even have a father. The only mother figure I had was a prostitute that died when I was two. My father sold me. My father tried to kill me. My father-esque, right? right. I ended up killing my own father. And uh, all he knows is war. But the thing is, like, through his such his life, he kind of accepts that his life is shit. In fact, he even sometimes goes out of his way to commit suicide. Like, he'll throw himself out to the wolves or he'll jump off a bridge. But some reason, like, this guy comes out alive. Obviously, he'll broke his, you know, he jump off a cliff, he'll break something. If the wolves come, he'll kill the wolves. But, like, he come out, like, beat up. And, and through this life, he's like, I don't know if faith or God is protecting me or I'm just an extremely lucky bastard. Like, All he knows is just keep well, swinging. 
that's all he knows. All he knows is how to pick up exactly. All he knows is how to pick up his sword, which is based on it. It's like the it's too big to be called a sword. It's more like a honk of steel. Uh, a giant honk, honk of steel, steel, bro. That's what is the, that one of the lines on that? Yes, yes. even on the anime. Yes, it's so it's, it's too big and too heavy to be considered a sword. It's more like a honk. Of, he just he swings it around like a honk of she, like a honk of metal, bro. It's crazy. And, uh, and the thing is, like the, the thing where it's like four hundred pounds and he swings it with one arm, bro. You know, one hand biceps with his veins out and breaks it. But the manga breaks down through several arcs. The first arc is the one I just started. It's called the the intro arc, right? It starts hardcore. Mm -hmm. But it pretty much to paint you a character kind of like Mad Max in an area of medievalness. Like he's hardcore, blah, blah, blah. The second arc is for the population. Where everybody knows the golden arc, the golden age arc was at the anime in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And the movies they made in Amazon. That's the second arc. It breaks down the relationship that plays throughout the pivotal role of the manga between three characters. The main character, Guts. His best friend, antagonist, Griffith, and a girl that plays in in between, which is a um, love interest. Casca. That's her name. <clears throat> they all they all exist throughout the manga. Mm -hmm. The golden age, what you see in manga, is like that part of the relationship, like their best friend. Oh, the golden age arc. Yeah. The golden that's, age that's what the first anime like goes over. Their right? best right. friend. We're talking about the nineteen ninety seven TV series. And the animated movies on Netflix. No, it's the nineteen ninety seven TV series Goat? The story is it, wise, is it good? Yes, I think so because it plays part. It does not play the entire role of manga because I read the manga of the Golden Age shark. It becomes games of throwsy. Really, the whole idea is of these these regular peasant because the story switches of like what happened in the middle of the intro into into intro manga. Suddenly, an event happens right where guts appears, and suddenly the sky opens and like five demon gods appear at the very at the end of the first manga. And out of this one, these guys, nobody can stop up except one crazy bastard with no arms and no legs, bro. Guts, bro. And he don't give a fuck. He goes... Berserk, you know, <laughs> he'll pick up anything. Oh, what does the name come from? Is it because he is always going berserk? Because the, not everything stops. And like, uh, like the god hand can like stop people mid air, right? But for some like reason, Smash Bros. Yes, yes. But for some reason, <laughs> guts like in his rage can push through paranormal activities, push through like through like the worst. And he and that's the thing about the manga because like it, is he pushing through because he's already suffered. Through his lifetime, where what is this pain compared to like his upbringing, or is it, or is it really faith, faith touching yeah. the hand? They play this role through through the entire thing. You're like, you don't know, you don't know. Even guts rejects it. There's a, there's a, a evil villain throughout the fourth arc that says guts, give up. You know, like God wants you to die. He's like, God or not, leave me alone. Stop bugging me. Stop talking to me. Mm -hmm. Don't leave me alone. All I know is how to pick up this sword. God doesn't pick up this sword. I do. So Damn. that's the and 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 his his philosophy through it matches a lot through what Friedrich Nietzsche was the 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 upcoming man, right? That you face your challenges, but the only way to break through challenges is through uh, suffering. So if, if you ever read books like *The Spectator True Star*, like Friedrich Nietzsche. Gus is the perfect example of that character, always always carrying the heavy burden of the past, but overcoming his past to become a better version of himself. So he's what Nietzsche would have called the 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 Superman, the the Ubermensch. Oh, the Ubermensch. Yeah, yeah. Ubermensch, mm. and and it plays a lot of that philosophy because Griffiths is the complete opposite. His, his, he is more like the rich guy, but he's very um, um, feet to the ground. Right? right, but he thinks he's the main character. He thinks he's Napoleon. He thinks that faith really does intervene. He thinks if if I'm meant to die because faith didn't want me to get there, mm -hmm. I didn't want it. Very Napoleon esque. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what breaks the character between guts and Griffith. That's what separates their friendship because this whole time through the Golden Age arc, they gone through wars, battles. Right? Do you know they're brothers. They both been raped when they were kids, yeah. and that that bond in their friendship. Like, bro, I've been. I I you're my brother, bro. I've been there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It becomes King of Throne because Griffith's got to play yeah, the part. Yeah, I mean, what is Griffith? Is Griffith his rival up to a point? Best or friend. When so does he become the bad guy? Here. Did he do anything wrong? Well, can I paint this he did question it. real quick? He so whenever they first meet Guts, originally, remember, it, like he tries to attack Griffith's men. Like He kills a couple of them at first, right? Well, that's like in this in the initiation. Like, right. Like, to that get into the, the, yeah. yeah. But so, that's what the whole... like When you watch the Golden Age, that's his friends. Like, the Golden Age talks is if, if Guts finding the family he never had. Right, Because but Guts also got bested by Griffith at this time as well. He had I, never been bested by any man, and Griffith was the first one to do it. And he did like effortlessly, and Guts was like, oh, shit. I understand who I am, yeah. Right. But throughout the... In great greeting, you bring it up because... The reason I bring it up because he got Game of Thrones because throughout the manga, Griffith wanted to become his kingdom a king pretty much right mm -hmm. Grit, guts just wanted to live life right i just want to survive griffith wanted a kingdom and protect those who are under him because right. he loves those who are under him right mm -hmm. 
That's the only difference of the goal. Becomes Game of Thrones because you got to play the part. You got to fuck with the royals. You got to do these wars. So if you read the mom because Game of Thrones, it eventually comes to a certain scene where Griff is fucking around with the high-level oligarch class. And he does a speech where Gut overhears. And this is what broke the tension. Oh, yeah. G- Griffith tells him, for you to call me my friend, you need to be my equal. Everything else below, everybody else is below me and search for my purpose. Guts over hearing that felt like then what happened to all these deeds I did for you during the golden age? What happened to all these times we bonded? Like, so I'm not your friend. I'm your underling. Right. Because he was like, only my friends can like supersede does, my goals. They have their own does dreams. Does Gus decides the only way for, I can, for you to call me my friend is have I become ego. So I'm going to go out there because all I know is how to pick up this long sword. I'm going to go find a dream. Mm-hmm. So he asked him, I'm going to separate, not because I'm breaking up, but because like become your equal. I got to find the dream. Your dream is to build a kingdom. Mine was just to live. Well, I want to go find what's out there now, you know? Right. He does. It was Casca. Love. It was the girl that I, I brought you around. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Gus left, this is where the whole famous eclipse thing happens, right? Finally, faith intervenes, but for only one person, Griffith. Now, is it faith? Is it God? Or is it demons? Is it, is it Satan? Who knows? But the whole point is that once a thing says, this whole sacrifice you did, you're about to die. Every person you've sacrificed, you killed, is going to be in the vein if you allow it to die. Or, just like your past soldiers, sacrifice these for me, and you'll get the kingdom you want. Yeah. So what are we doing here? Oh. All these friends you love, guts, all of these people that died before him, for what? For you to give up now? This they're is gonna, it? They're all going to be in vain. Yeah. And so Griff makes this decision that says, they're my underlings for a reason. They, they, I didn't force them to serve me. They wanted to serve me. But throughout the throughout the manga and through the anime, is he is he making that decision or was it faith purposely the god demons him pushing them to make that decision, right? Mm-hmm. Because unlike Guts and Griffith, Guts never gets no open sky. He never gets none of that. The, he never gets no help from nobody. He's got all the, the, the complete opposite of what Griffith Griffith decides to accept the God hand, becomes a demon, gets revenge on Guts in the most brutal way. And that's how we close the Golden Age arc. Mm-hmm. After that, since then, there's been some copycats of the Black Swordsman Act, the ones after that. But they're shit. But from what I've heard, Netflix wants to bring up the continuation of what happens after the Golden Age arc, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. We get in a war with an Indian army. We get in a war with the with the God Hand. And then we get into a boat with the manga lasted like 20 years. The guy drew a boat and the guy for 20 years. Eventually, we fight a big-ass little way all the way until Guts finally gets to like, quote-unquote, heaven. And once he found peace, once Guts gets what he wanted, where the manga kind I thought it was perfect because Guts has always faced suffering. So when he was in quote unquote like heaven, all he says, how fucking bored I am. How fucking bored yeah. I am. It does nothing hunts him. Nothing, nothing's killing him. Nothing's after him. He's healed. He has a f- full belly and only says how fucking bored I am. All I got to do is swing this fucking sword. And it's beautiful. It's crazy. And the best part is that before the manga kai died, he left us with the most perfect ending before this motherfucker died. When the eclipse happened, that happened in 1990-esque, right? The last panel he ever drew was with the three main characters together again after all those years. Leaving it mm. in a in a cliffhanger. And the next day he passed away. Yeah, he ended up passing away, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So somebody else picked up the, the story now. His best right? friend. His best, his best friend. friend who Griff is based on. <laughs> Crazy, right? But ironic, the, ironic, yeah. <laughs> but his best friend, it never was. Was it fate? Damn. <laughs> or did he just pick up the pen and just start start writing, bro? <laughs> God's hand, demon's hand. You gotta read the manga. <laughs> you know, some of the cool things that real quick, you just glazed over. Can I just, I just want to run. Oh, back hey, on just him. bring it up, yeah. Um, was so I brought up the fact that Griffith got originally bested by Griffith. I'm sorry, Guts got bested by Griffith in the very beginning whenever they first mm-hmm. met. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it wasn't until he said, all right, I want to. I don't want to be your, your underling. I want to be your equal. And in order for me to achieve this, I got to find the dream. I got to have my own dreams. And uh, Griffith says, the only way you're leaving my camp is if you best me. Yes. And, oh, that's right. That's and right they have this big, like, epic little battle. And within, like, two swings, Guts gets him. Yep. And he's like, holy shit, he really did it. Well, the thing is, the thing is, like, because I mentioned the manga through the Golden Age arc, mm-hmm. it's because he's going through the whole political, like, in the manga, he's doing political shit. Right. People trying to kill him. You know, he's backstabbing, poisoning people. Like, really, Game of Thrones, bro. Right. Um, he doesn't swing the sword. Guts does. In fact, the dirty work, he says, hey, guys, go kill this guy. He's got to try to kill me. Damn. I bet I got you. Hey, bro, these three guys trying to kill me. Guts with one swing, kiss, 
cuts three heads off, right? Mm-hmm. In the in the Golden Age manga arc, right? right? So by the time they fight, it's like, all right, bet, let's fight. He haven't you have not picked up a sword, you haven't practiced. Oh. In fact, you're with the generals chilling. Yeah. Guts in the front lines. And I thought this was another crazy fact that whenever Guts beats him and he leaves, Griffith is now broken. Like he's a broken man afterwards. And in the kingdom, the guy mm-hmm. that he's actually chilling with or whatever, he ends up sleeping with that guy's daughter, mm-hmm. like the princess. That's what causes that. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and the king comes to him. He's like, bro, what did you do this for? And he's just like, bro, I just did you the favor. You know, you were going to do it first anyway. And he's mm-hmm. like, whoa. So he says this to the king and the king loses it. He cuts out Griffith's tongues. He he castrates him. He cuts off his fingers, mm-hmm. cuts off his eyelids, and he's been tortured for years. For one year straight. A, a whole year straight. When Griffith finally finds out what happened to his boy, or I'm sorry, when Guts finds out what happened to his boy Griffith, he goes back to save Griffith, Griffith from this from this torture. And at that point, he's already given up on everybody. Yeah. And and that's when he realizes, I'm just a shell of a man that's left. Yeah. And that's when he makes that decision. That's when he gets the, the ultimate decision of, let mm. these men perish and all your suffering goes for nothing. Like Or like it goes for a reason or you die for nothing. Up to you. Yeah, and that's when he makes the deal with the goddamn. I was like, damn, that's so good, man. Mm-hmm. That was good. That great uh, great yeah. pitch, bro. <laughs> now, I recommend no, it. Hey, I kind of want to watch it now. It, it's a I great mean, I read nothing but good things about it. You know, one of the most influential dark fantasy works yes yeah very beautiful very well, well, very well well written guts is guts ain't no saint either bro he's a he's he's uh moody he he says the most evil things he's cold-blooded yeah no heart uh, no heart whatsoever but like um the thing is the thing about the panel is like after he says goofy shit he'll hide in the corner and cry really not meaning it you know it's like i didn't mean to say that shit at all i was just fucking frustrated you know like yeah. i have no arm you know i just fought a demon like how would you feel yeah, dude, yeah. Then he gets nobody his... helped him nobody That's helps hilarious. him yeah. Yeah, nobody helps and yeah. it's a really old manga i mean we're talking 90s right yeah, yeah. he drew yeah. it all bro it's beautiful so yeah. one of my favorite one panels. of the best early mm-hmm. dark mangas huh? dark fantasy mangas you think like mangas today would be around like if it wasn't for berserk Ooh. full metal uh-huh. alchemist attack on titan demon slayer Damn. I would I would say Jujutsu Kaisen itself. It's it's a very Ooh, influential. Dude, many people take. many people gave credit to the man when he passed away. I feel like he made me understand better like niche writing it's because I, I finally saw a physical creature of what he means. And specifically one scene where like guts kills like pretty much like a god, right? But like throughout the manga, like you have a broken arm, like no rest. He, like you he wouldn't sleep. Like you, you fight one demon after another, like or carry a baby or do something stupid. Like oh my god, bro, I just want to like put the sword down, right? But the thing is, like after he does that, um, all his friends come in. All his friends come in like, bro, we need to help him out. And this demon that who he was riding with, like to help him kill this god, mm-hmm. nobody touch him. Nobody touch him. I've seen you so many times get up by yourself. You fought me, you cut this off, and you got up right after. Don't tell me the black swordsman doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> the next panel, bro, you see him get up with one sword, bro. Damn. And the best part, and then the next part is he's so tired. He's so like, oh, he's like, the demon is like, yeah. Then guess who appears out of nowhere? Griffith. Griffith. <laughs> and I'm in the manga, you know, and then Guts loses it. He goes, Berserk. And, and with, with broken <laughs> arms. <Title card. laughs> with, broken, with broken arms, like you've seen them broken arms, picks up the sword, and all he does says, Griffin, like ready to t- ready to spin the block, like bro, you have no arms, bro. Like, what, <laughs> what are you doing? And like, there's one of my favorite ones. He picks it up with his with his mouth, bro. Picks Jesus. it up with him and just, oh, you know, just so much hatred in that man's eye. Yeah. And then he, he ends up like getting this armor, this badass armor too, but it only like works by inflicting pain on him or whatever, right? Like it shatters bones in his body in order it, for it to it work. It allows him to go berserk. berserk. <laughs> That's right. yeah. Do you think berserk started the trend of big ass swords? Yes. Yeah, he think, was the first one. He invited yeah. he inspired he Cloud. Cloud. I was about yeah. to say yeah, he, he inspired Cloud. He inspired bro. Cloud. Inspired Cloud. Dante yeah. from Devil May Cry. Yeah, yes. too. Yeah. Ichigo from Leech. Absolutely. 100. Every time I see a big sword, now I'm like, besides me, guts for sure. Guts, bro. bro. I, just, I love that man. That's such a ah, oh, dude. Now I want to watch it again. Now, now, dog. now I'm gonna put it on my list of things to watch. It the the manga ninety four. It's the, gonna come I, right after Gundam. I say I say read the <laughs> read the first manga part the the intro arc. Mm-hmm. And then watch the ones on Netflix. That was it, it. Just summarizes right in the spot. It's really right. good, right? And then wait for the animation. The, the one the new coming one that's up, coming the out. New one, yeah, the nice. black. Because the movie ends with the first the first panel of the Black Swordsman coming out. Oh, that's sick, bro! Like after the credits, there's a c- secret ending at the end of the movie. I had mm. no idea about that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I don't, yeah, I gotta watch it. The more you know, am I right, guys? Know. Find it on Amazon Prime. Hey, all right, guys. Uh, segue. What? Not so much say one of the main girls is Casca. Oh. A real one, bro, to this day. Always ride or die, bro, like a good soldier. 
And that's not that's something that you always see on mangas. That's true. Speaking of writer dies, there is some mangas, yeah. Speaking of writer dies, man, I would say who are some of the best writer dies in DBZ? Man, bro, your mom is the best writer dies. All I know, Jesus. Um, I would say my first go to is going to be Chi Chi, bro. Chi Chi is one of the best writer dies. Like all green flags when it comes to Chi Chi, bro. You know, Chi Chi always had Goku's back. Always. Now he was always on his back, like, hey, <laughs> hey, like, come on, get this shit, <laughs> you know? Goku, I need you to do this, I need you to do that. But at the same time, she always had his back. Mm -hmm. True. You, you know, know, I saw the last episode of DBZ, just real quick, like, real quick, I have it ended with the five post boo. Mm -hmm. It's a fight about Chi Chi's party, bro. And right. then Goku doesn't show up. He's taking care of some animal, blah, blah, blah. He shows up all late, like always. Mm -hmm. Guess what Chi Chi's first words are? What? Let me fix my man the plate. Damn, dog. Yeah, she was like, you know, what what fine ass Japanese or was she Chinese or was she what what was her in the city? Uh well <laughs> Who doesn't know. want yeah. a fine ass with the burning kingdom? <laughs> They're all Japanese. <laughs> I don't know, bro. They're all Japanese, I guess. <laughs> and her big ass bison dad, you know? Yeah. Ox King. <laughs> Ox King. Right. Yeah. Which would have been cool if I would have seen like genetically Gohan grow as big as Oxygen. Would have been cool. One of the kids, right? <laughs> one, why can't one of the kids look like Chi Chi? Why yeah. do they have to all be Super Saiyans? They're all straight Goku, bro. <laughs> like literally little Goku ripoffs. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know, man. A again, another time I I'll, I'll even reference uh, Chi Chi being a real one. Well, first off, she actually got off of Goku's ass after he brought home 10 million Zenny in Super. When whenever Hercule hooked his ass up, that's the only time she finally got stopped messing with him, bro. She's like, "Oh, we're rich now. Say less, fam. Don't even worry about it. Go train, son. Go train, baby. I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> Let me give Go you a real land. one. Let me give yeah. you a realer one, bro. After all these years, bro, you know, I I, I, go, I go to girls and be like, "Hey, remember me?" She's like, "Ew, no, bro. You know, get pepper spray, bro." Right? <laughs> Chi Chi goes up to Goku and she says, "Do you remember me? Do you remember that promise?" Oh yeah. Uh, and he's like, "Let's not forget that." Yeah. yeah. What a real. Straight up to Dragon Ball, bro. Ball. <laughs> Take it all the way to Dragon Ball. Yes, yeah. sir. The original. The day oneers. Do you remember that promise? Man. And what can I have a Chichi in my life? Bro? Like, do you want a Bulma or do you want a Chichi, bro? Be honest, bro. Because Bulma's been with Yan Chai. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get your Vegeta, but you know. <laughs> I, I she love, settled down eventually. Yeah. She, after and she, she is a real one, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Because think about it, bro. She's she's made, she figured out how to re replicate Saiyan armor from nothing. Like bro. from broken scraps. She figured out Namekian technology with a different language and nobody to translate for her, bro. And bro. traveled across solar systems to get bro, to Namek, right? She's a genius. We're not saying she's not a genius, bro. No, I'm just saying, like, but. this is what she did for, for what, bro? She did it for the Dragon Balls? She figured out how to freaking, uh, what, do the, uh, to find mystical items, dog, with the radar. She had no training on this, and she did, and look, and on top of that, she built a gravity room for Vegeta. She built some new armor whenever he needed it. Damn. She's funded all of his projects. Damn. Whenever he bounced after she got pregnant, she never complained. Like, you know, she's like, you train a lot. That's she's her so, biggest complaint. She's also a green flag. You know? She is a green flag. Bro. I think she sat down with Chi Chi. Like, look, this is how you keep a saying man happy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> look, I got classes. All right, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. Let me tell you how to get this done. Now, uh, the most real one, let's not forget, Android 18. Mm. Android 18 is the realest because... She let a little short king turn into a good person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely, bro. Like, there is no program in her chip to be loyal, but she chose to be. She chose, she chose to be loyal. To be loyal. Mm, there's a difference, bro. They don't even have a house, dog. They live in an apartment. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Like, she, she got a house. Boomer got a whole compound. I mean, it's bigger than the box that right, Android team came off, bro. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than the coffin she came out of. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Yeah. All he had to do was wish for it. Yeah. Damn. He's krill enough. He's krilled enough. <laughs> I love that, bro. Kenneth. Yes. I love it, bro. I love it. I don't know, man. For me, they're all green flags. I take any of them. I wouldn't complain to get it. Give me a Boma. Give me a Chi Chi. Give me 18, dog. I as wouldn't. long as she's from DBZ, she's my kind of girl, bro. That's, That's right. how you know, bro. If she's into DBZ, if she brings you anything else, bro, like she brings you D&D, &D, kind of a red flag, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, does that make Bulma or Chi Chi one of the strongest humans? Mm. Chi Chi is the strongest human because she knows K.O. can and she has knocked out damn near every Z warrior, Z fighter, like on the head, one shot. One shot, each one of them. Has she? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure she's punked Piccolo. Man, she was in a tournament, though, right? She was in a tournament. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably Pan, bro. Oh, no, because... No, Pan she's is still saying. She's still saying. Pan is the Pan? Saying, yeah. Okay. yeah. She's Wait, a quarter who, saying. What about... Uh, she's knocked out Goku. She's knocked out Vegeta. She's knocked out Krillin. She's knocked out Yamcha. What's she's Gohan's knocked wife's out name? 
Videl. Videl. Man, she took a beating in the Boom Saga, bro. Yeah, she did take Like, some. bro, I, like, stopped watching. I walked away, bro. That was one I had to walk away on. I'm not yeah, going to lie. That was I a... was like, damn, that's half the episode? I'm going to be right back, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was such a... And even Goku, stop. Doc. You're going to get eliminated. Don't do it. <laughs> bro, I heard Goku give the guy a sensibly, bro. You know? <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, you know what they say? Hold on. <laughs> And I'm going to say it. <laughs> in that moment, she win. Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was going to bring it all the way back around. Bring it all the way back around. Full circle, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, I don't know, man, but I would definitely say after Chi-Chi, then it's Krillin, and then it's Tien. Mm. As far as World's Strongest Human. No, I'm a liar. Chi-Chi, Master Roshi, Krillin, Tien. <laughs> He taught the command mayor. It took him like mm. 90 years to figure it out, but he figured it out, bro. That's the one go-to movie that still gets referenced even 40 years later in True. the anime. You know what I'm True. saying? I mean, that's how he'd be Khalifa. He's still the master. Mm. He is still the master. I forgot the the, the 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 spirit technique that he used to seal somebody inside that jar, mm. but uh, he used that like four times. He should have died after the first one, bro. I don't know. You know? I hope loyalty is a strength, and uh, if that's so, I, I, I'll I pick the girl that used to be blue hair and then blonde hair. Oh, launch? Launch. Let's not forget about her, yeah. Yes. Again, she's loyal because she was a thief and she stayed a maid, bro. That's loyalty, bro. <laughs> that's true. Dude, the master wrote the most... Come on, bro. <laughs> I, I I don't. Is she a DBZ no, flag, no, green flag? She's a green flag, bro. The only red flag. <laughs> the only red flag in DBZ is uh, Krillin's one homegirl who was a gold digger, and then she bounced and then came back later on, and oh, she that? loved him. Remember? Uh, it was during the filler arc. You don't remember that he dated a chick who was young, like Bulma or whatever. She had long, longer blue hair. I don't know, she had I don't a body know. on her. You guys mm. remember her? No, nah, bro. She left for a duration, and then she came back, and she waited for Krillin, mm. and then finally, like. He's like, yeah, no, I don't want you no more. Bro, I remember the girl with, uh, what's his name, Bobby D? Not Bobby D. Baba? She, she used to hang out with this little, like, uh, a dog ninja guy. Poor? Oh, the one that's going to end up with Trunks? My. That, that guy young? My, is that who you're talking about? Is that about? her? Yeah, but she used to work for Red, off, right? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she used to work for the Red, Red Ribbon Army, but with the... Yeah. Her, yeah. Bro, she stayed with this guy, with that with that, with that that bad guy, like, years. Like, her, she was like the the... The original Red Rocket off again. Oh, yeah. Team <laughs> and Rocket she's loyal, Rocket. bro. Like, I'm yeah. sorry, bro, but the DBZ girls are loyal. And that, that and, 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 the and she's going to end up with Trunks. Yeah, she'll have two of her in a different what? universe. What? Yeah, remember in the future, they went, they ended up together. I used to pray for times like these. I used yeah. to pray like times If your this. girl's DBZ fan or a pokey girl, she's loyal. Uh, you know what? Is she owns a Dragon Ball t-shirt? She's probably loyal. She got it at Target. Mm. <laughs> she got it at Target. And that's a On green this. flag. <laughs> and that's a green flag. <laughs> Target? <laughs> at the end of the day, that's a green flag. That is a green Facts. flag. All right, guys. Well, before we end this episode, we have to say again. Uno vez mas. Go check out last week's episode. John Swayze, guys. Who? John Swayze. That's the right. man, the myth, the legend. One Piece, Soul Leader, Full Metal Alchemist, and... My Hero Academia, of That's course. That's right, damn it. Don't forget, all for one. Absolutely. Not to mention all his previous works, the ADR director and... Eminence and Shadow. Yeah, That's his right. little pet projects that he has right now, Eminence and Shadow. He's um, he said some of the work that he's cared a lot about. He's kind of like a big deal, guys. In case you don't know, and Especially check uh, Eminence and Shadow on High Dive and the movie coming out, Tunnels to Tunnel to Summer. Tunnels to Tunnels to Summers. That's right. So make sure you guys catch that John Swayze interview. And guys, you know we got more special stuff coming for you. We have more interviews coming up this week. And drum roll, please, Suki. Okay. Okay, Suki, what the fuck? <laughs> Stay tuned. Classic Suki. Yeah, I don't have drum rolls. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there, but I don't know about Suki, but keep an eye out for us for an upcoming special announcement for all of you guys out there. Yes, yes. Be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Guys. But definitely more interviews coming up, more we'll, anime content, more good content in general. We'll bring you a surprise next week. Again, guys, we have so much more fun stuff planned for you guys. Stay tuned for the future with Witty Banter Media, guys. We have so much more coming out for you guys. Stay excited. Stay hype. You want to know why? We are, ladies and gentlemen, and all we bring you is heat all day, every day, to this day. We'll call you Dylan. We're going to spit fire, fire, fire. It's Witty Banter Media. Media. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode with the WBM Podcast. This has been one of your hosts. It's your boy, Merck. Make sure you guys are following us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, all at WBM underscore podcast. And you know this is Chop Make sure you catch our interview, that special interview and all our special episodes on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Music, Stitcher, all that jazz. 
And it's your boy Tico in the mix. And the mother, mother, mix. As always, check out the website wbmpodcast.com. And if you want to send us topics, you can always send them on our social media. Reach out on our social media. That's right, guys. We love the engagement. We love to hear from you. But like I said, stay tuned. So much more fun stuff coming soon. We'll catch you guys in the next one. We out. Any last words, guys? No? Uh, Suki? Oh, yeah, yeah. We can finally get her on this time. You guys ready? I'm just kidding. Let's go!